Alrighty. Same day, yes. Um, Alright. Sometimes I worry about being too revealing and how much I dislike Asheville. Because <laughs> I know that, you know, it's, but you know, some people are from Asheville, no one likes to hear that. Some people are, seem to be really invested in Asheville, even if they're not from here. Or, you know, people thought I would like it, then I don't. I'll tell you, on paper, you know, you might have thought it would be a good fit. It's just, in reality, it's just not going to work for me. And in a way, that's okay. You know, depressing for the interim? Yes. But it's one more place I can cross on my list. <laughs> There's a couple of things. I guess, you know, the more I experience other things, like when I was in Ann Arbor, I often thought, I, we immediately knew this was a mistake, we liked New York, you know. When you're in New York, and because I went to college in New York and then I lived in New York, like, I wasn't sure that's where I would want to have my kids, and you don't, I mean, you know, there's downsides to New York, of course. And obviously, it's not for everyone. And so that's all I can say to people who love Asheville. Like, if you love Asheville, you probably wouldn't love New York, and that's cool. And I love New York and don't love Asheville, you know? Or, you know, people who want to live in Alaska don't want to live, you know, in Florida. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's something for everyone, folks. Something for everyone. I still think I'd like to live in Sweden. But I know that that's a fantasy based on nothing. Um, but here's the deal. So we left, right? Then we're immediately like, damn it, New York was better. Here's what's really cuckoo for coconuts. When we were in New York, in the beginning we had two separate apartments. Then we moved into Mr. S. Rent controlled apartment, people. His apartment, which was pretty much as big as our house. I mean, not divided in as useful of a way, but not much smaller, was only like $950 a month. Our mortgage is twice that, you know what I mean? So, you know, now what's funny is we left because we didn't think we could have the quality of life that we wanted raising kids in New York. And ever since then, we've been paying twice as much. So, that was dumb. That was dumb to dumb dumb, folks. Even dumber. A few years before that, Mr. F had the opportunity to buy a loft in Park Slope for a very good price. And yeah, that was dumb too. Anyway, here we are. Lessons learned. You know, that's all life is. And when I was in Ann Arbor, I kept thinking, and this will make no sense unless you really like a big city. that I was missing a sense of, like, grandness, right, in Ann Arbor. That I was missing, you know, that I felt like I wanted to either be at the water or I want to be in, like, a place of extreme natural beauty or I want to be in the city, which, while not necessarily natural beauty, is beautiful in its own largeness and your sense of connectedness to a larger thing and, like, you know, some of the Arctic is quite beautiful. Plus, if you're in New York, you are in the water. Anyway. Um, and so, on paper, moving to Asheville made sense, right? Because I'm like, ha-ha, we'll be moving to a place of natural beauty. The thing is, it's not really beautiful where you live in Asheville. That's the problem. If you're driving on the Blue Ridge Parkway, beautiful, beautiful, but that's not where we live, you know? We live close to it, but we don't live in it, and that's what's missing. Like, you know, my family will take this vacation. Wyoming to like a ranch and it's in the middle of the Rockies there's nothing there it's on the Platte River and there you feel like a sense of a physical largeness you know and that is kind of what I meant and I kind of was hoping you'd have that here and you don't or I don't you know maybe someone else does you have to go to it and I know like for a lot of people that's all they need but for me I'm lazy folks I don't go to anything so <laughs> if it's not a part of my actual daily experience it might as well not be there. I mean, that, that's just my personality, and that's not going to change. You know what I mean? Like, um, if I'm going to live at the water, like, I need to live at the wa at, on the water's edge, you know, or I need to live. That's why the city works for me. You live in the city, you're in the city. Everywhere you are, you're in it. You're living it. 
Oh, and I miss it, people. And I miss the walkable. Well, the reason we moved to this neighborhood, if anyone's wondering why do we pick this neighborhood that's not the best, because it was a walkable, it presented the opportunity for a walkable community, which is one thing I've never gotten over since leaving um, Brooklyn. Never gotten over it. Um, people who did, have not lived in New York or whatever, or have been there and not like, really, you know, you were just on vacation so you didn't really know. I know it doesn't make sense, but in New York, much like when you go to Rome or whatever, where I think that's an obvious thing to find out, like there's their different piazzas and every little place has its own center. Same thing with New York. Each neighborhood has its own thing. And what are you guys doing? Cookies. You guys are just helping yourselves some cookies? One. And the same thing, what'd you get? That almost book matches the letter of my name is Seth. It goes a wind down. That's called an X. Um, and so, if I was in Park Slope, you know, I didn't have to leave Park Slope. I could get everything I wanted. There was a fantastic sushi grade fishmonger. There was the deli counter. There's a crazy Italian specialty market. You know, like, you go and you walk and you get all your, like, you go to one store and just get your chicken breast. And then, you, you know, it's like totally old school. And you were regular everywhere, and I loved it. Loved every minute of it. Um, you know, and I miss it. I miss it. And so that's why we moved here, because there's like, within half a mile you can get all this stuff. Half a mile? What the heck are we thinking? <laughs> that's too far, people. I mean, if you're going to really do it, it has to be close. And it turns out, like, I don't go to this grocery store. Or it turns, you know, there's all sorts of stuff that turned out to not work out. But basically, I feel like I need to live either in a European city or a New York City, like, because that's what I want. So, that's, I mean, that's the thing. And, like, people, you know, there's nothing... It's really hard to find anything quite like New York, at all, unless you're in Europe. It's very hard to find a city that has its services so that its inhabitants can get everything they need within your neighborhood. Um, and that is the thing I miss most. I mean, Ann Arbor didn't have that either. That was my number one thing to complain about Ann Arbor. Because we lived close enough to walk downtown, but we didn't live close enough to walk to a grocery store or, you know, make everything work out the way that I wanted. What the heck? Hi. Hey, Charlotte. Let me get back yeah. on the stool. All right. So those are my thoughts. she is. So, I'm like really honing in New York. There's job potential for Mr. up there. That's fantastic. Um, I'm still licensed there, people, because I never gave up the dream. So I've maintained my professional license. So that's the positive for me. Um, I can pretty easily get work there, more easily than anyplace else. And, um, you know, that's my dream. That's my thing. We can rent an apartment for the same thing we're paying for our mortgage. So yeah, we don't own it. But you know what? We can invest the down payment that we would have had and have it invested in another way, not in not in real estate. You know, there's other choices. So here's to uh, planning ahead.